year was 2000. A new year. The turn of a century. A new millennia. The Y2K fear had worn off. There still exists a general state of either denial, complacency, or even apathy about both the reality and the potential effects of Y2K. Emergency calls went through, the power stayed on, and we didn't go back into the dark ages. The internet was becoming a more common thing. Millions of Americans own a personal computer. If you're one of them, you can now glimpse the future with nothing more than a modem, a phone line, and a few dollars a month. TV sitcoms were a staple in family household viewing every night. I'm so sorry, the Quentin Harry Ape model was sold out. Ah. Just rinse the dish. Oh, 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 what I do is uh, I look a woman up and down and I say, Hey, how you doing? Cell phones were still on the rise and becoming more popular every day. And Sony was about to release the greatest gaming console of all time. Sony had already managed to steal the spotlight as one of the top home gaming consoles from Nintendo, Sega, and Atari with the original PlayStation. Now, they were about to make history once again. If you were one of the lucky few who were there on launch night to purchase at one of the few launch parties, or maybe even a midnight release at a local game store, then you remember the hype. The electric excitement and nearly unbearable anticipation that buzzed throughout the many others waiting in line for their very own PlayStation 2. Welcome one and all to a look inside the greatest and highest selling video game console of all time, the PlayStation 2. Come and join me on this journey as we look back at the PlayStation 2, 23 years later in this retrospective. Every single generation has something that sort of defines that generation. For my father, who was unironically a baby boomer, was the music era of the Beatles and the beginning of Woodstock. For those of us more around my age, was the video game console era. I grew up during the 90s, and as I grew up, I came across many different gaming consoles, and even some minor computer gaming as well. However, there was one that stuck in my mind as the best. The first console I remember ever playing was, was with my older siblings, and it would have been the NES, or Nintendo Entertainment System. We played Duck Hunt, and a little bit of Mario Brothers, and a baseball game that I can't recall the name of. My friend next door seemed to have every single gaming system there ever was, so I got to play a bunch of them over at his house. He introduced me to the Super Nintendo with the Super Mario Brothers and the WWF WrestleMania arcade game. Then we got into the Sega Genesis, you know, the first all-black console, at least to my knowledge. We enjoyed playing Sonic the Hedgehog and trying to get all the rings and not hit the spikes and end up losing all of your rings. I loved bouncing off all the springs and trying to go as fast as I could. I really loved the tunnel that you ran through, trying to get as many rings as possible and dodging all the bombs. I don't remember if that was a level bonus or not, but it was really fun. For those of us that have experienced video games growing up, we all got introduced to them at different times and with different consoles. Some of us started with Pong and the Atari, and moved all the way up to modern gaming with the PS5, the Xbox series, and modern PC gaming. So. Let's take a trip down home gaming console memory lane and find out which console was the best, not just in my opinion, but definitely the rest of the gaming world. Now, I know there are a lot of consoles than what I will list, but these are simply the ones that I had experience with. Such consoles as the Atari, then later came the Nintendo Entertainment System, or NES, then the Sega Genesis, then Nintendo answered back with the Super Nintendo. Years later came the first appearance of the Sony PlayStation, one of the first CD-ROM using non-PC gaming consoles, after which Nintendo again responded with the Nintendo 64. 
both of these being some of the very first few 3D animation gaming consoles, which ushered us into what is known as the fifth generation of video game consoles. When we transitioned from using the original 8-bit or even 16-bit processors and moved up to 32-bit, quite the jump from this to this. After the amazing increase of popularity of the first PlayStation and the Nintendo 64, just a few years later came the best-selling overall gaming console ever, the PlayStation 2. The PlayStation 2 was released for the holiday season of 2000. Sony really stepped up their game with this console, in my opinion, from the last one because the world was rapidly changing over from VHS tapes for home media to DVDs. The PS2 was also the first console to introduce the DVD format for video games, allowing for better graphics and longer gameplay. The PS2 was a major step forward in console gaming, offering superior graphics, better sound, and improved gameplay. The console was designed to be backwards compatible with the original PlayStation console, allowing players to continue playing their old games on the new console. Now, being a console of first this and first that does have its dangers of those particular features becoming useless or outdated in a few generations. However, luck was on Sony's side and worked out beautifully in their favor. The PlayStation 2 ended up selling over 155 million units worldwide. Along with its most popular game, GTA San Andreas, the PlayStation 2 was a smash hit made everyone forget about any other consoles in the past. With even more updated graphics and the ability for more detailed characters and world models, the PlayStation 2 set itself apart and then took several steps forward. Upon the launch of the console, 29 games were launched with it, but obviously sold separately. The launch games were of many genres, so everyone had an opportunity to enjoy the new console. Games such as Armored Core 2, DOA 2 Hardcore, ESPN International Track and Field, ESPN X Games Snowboarding, Eternal Ring, Evergrace, Fantvision, Gun, Griffin Blaze, Kesson, Madden NFL 2001, Midnight Club Street Racing, Moto GP, NHL 2001, Orphan, Cue Ball Billiards Master, Ready to Rumble Boxing Round 2. Ridge Racer 5, Silent Scope, Smuggler's Run, SSX, Street Fighters EX3 Summoner Swing Away Tekken Tag Tournament
time splitters. Unreal Tournament. Wild Wild Racing. And X Squad. What follows these launch titles is the largest game library of any video game console of all time. When you first purchased a brand new PS2, it came with the console itself, one DualShock 2 controller, one 8 megabyte memory card, power cable, an AV cable, the instructional manual, and even a demo disc of various games. With over 4,300 games made for its hardware, nothing comes close to its popularity. I mean, check out this list of how many games were released for each console. A few hundred games here and there, maybe just over a thousand or more, but not very significant until the launch of the very first PlayStation, and then there was this massive spike in games made. Over 4,000 games were made for that console alone. Then came along its successor with even more games made for the PlayStation 2. With such a massive list of options of games to choose from, for all the different gamers who own the PS2, there were games for just about everyone. You have the shooters, ranging from the Metal Gear Solid franchise to the Call of Duty franchise, the Medal of Honor series, the Battlefield series, Black, and many others. You have your sports games, and oh my gosh, the sports games. Well, I'm sure if there is a major professional sport out there, EA has made a continuous yearly game for it. Then you have your racing games, the infamous Need for Speed franchise, the Gran Turismo series, the Midnight Club series, the Burnout series, and many more. Then the more just-for-fun type of platform games, such as the Jack and Daxter series, the Ratchet and Clank series, Crash Bandicoot, Sly Cooper, Rayman, and the Spyro series, just to name a few. Now, don't forget about your fighting games, like all the Mortal Kombats, Tekken, Dragon Ball Z Budokai games, Soul Calibur 2, and Guilty Gear X2, and many others. But even with all these different titles and genres of games, what is so special about the PS2 and its massive list of games is that during its reign as the current major gaming console back then, many pop culture films were also coming out that either directly or indirectly created either move-in tie-in games that were a direct reflection of the film, or were simply inspired by the films and took concept of the films and made their own game. Think back to the early 2000s and look at the popular films that were coming out around that time. The Fast and Furious series, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, the Harry Potter series, the Spider-Man trilogy, and the Star Wars prequel trilogy, just to name a few. Movie tie-in games were immensely popular during the PS2 era as studios saw the opportunity to capitalize on the popularity of movies and the growing popularity of the PS2 console. These games were typically released alongside the movie, and they were designed to recreate the experience of the movie in video game format. One of the successful movie tie-in games for the PS2 was The Lord of the Rings The Two Towers, released in 2002. The game was based on the first two movies of The Lord of the Rings trilogy. 
The game was a hack and slash action game that allowed players to control characters like Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli as they fought their way through the various levels based on scenes from the movies. The game was well received by critics and fans alike, and it sold over 5 million copies worldwide. But was then much approved on later with the release of Lord of the Rings The Return of the King, released in 2003 which gave you much more players to choose from, like Gandalf, all four of the Hobbits, and once you complete the game, you get to play as Faramir. You also have different paths you can follow as you battle through the levels of the third movie, and, spoiler alert, you destroy the Ring of Power. Those games were my childhood and I played them over and over again so many times. I would sit and watch the movies, and then fire up my PS2 and play the levels, and I really felt like I was a part of the films themselves. Another successful movie tie-in game for the PS2 was Spider-Man 2, released in 2004. The game was based on the movie of the same name. The game allowed players to swing through the city as Spider-Man, and it included an open-world environment that allowed players to explore and complete various missions. It is widely regarded as one of the best superhero games of all time. One of the standout features of the game was its revolutionary web-swinging mechanic, which allowed players to control Spider-Man's movements through the city with unprecedented freedom and fluidity. Prior to Spider-Man 2, Spider-Man games typically featured a simplified version of web swinging, where the player would shoot webs at the sky or nearby buildings and automatically swing in that direction. This mechanic was functional, but lacked the finesse and control the players desired. In Spider-Man 2, the web swinging mechanic was redesigned from the ground up using a physics-based system that allowed players to control the direction and momentum of Spider-Man's swings. The system allowed players to swing through the city with a level of control and precision that had never been seen before in a video game. The web swinging mechanic in Spider-Man 2 was intuitive and satisfying to use. Players could shoot webs at any point in the environment and use the momentum from their swings to navigate through the city. By tapping the jump button at the right moment, players could launch Spider-Man into the air and perform acrobatic maneuvers, such as flips and spins before landing gracefully on a nearby building or street. The web swinging mechanic in Spider-Man 2 was also coupled with dynamic camera system that followed Spider-Man's movements through the city, giving players a sense of speed and momentum as they swung through the air. The camera would dynamically adjust based on the player's movements, adding to the sense of immersion and control. The game was praised for its open world gameplay and faithful recreation of the Spider-Man character. Web swinging mechanic in Spider-Man 2 was a huge hit with players and critics alike. It was praised for its intuitive and responsive controls, as well as its ability to capture the feeling of being Spider-Man. The success of the web swinging mechanic in Spider-Man 2 helped to influence future superhero games and open world games, and remains a benchmark for web swinging mechanics in video games to this day. It's such simple game that follows the story of the movie, along with some side stories that aren't in the film, but certainly add to its replayability. Even once you've finished the main storyline, you are free to roam about the city and continue to answer calls for help from NPCs on the streets. Or just simply swing around and work on your stylish tricks. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets was another successful movie tie-in game for the PS2. Released in 2002, the game was based on the second Harry Potter movie. The game allowed players to explore Hogwarts' school of witchcraft and wizardry, and included various tasks and puzzles based on scenes from the movie. The game was praised for its faithful recreation of the Harry Potter universe and its engaging gameplay. Now, regardless of how you feel about the Star Wars prequel trilogy, love them or hate them, they did produce some very addicting games that many still swear by as some of the best ever made. Just to name a few, the Battlefront games where you roam throughout the galaxy to various locations and have massive battles as either a part of the clones or the droid side of the war. 
There were different classes to choose from depending on your playstyle, along with some unforgettable modes like Team Deathmatch, Capture the Flag, and objective-based modes where you had to complete certain tasks to win the battle. These games had and still have a massive following with the recreation of the games for the more modern gaming consoles, with the ability to either team up with your friends or to play against each other to see who is the better player in the multiplayer modes. And if you do well enough and take out enough enemies without dying or complete enough tasks, you get to play as a hero or villain. And with your more advanced abilities, you can use them to your advantage and plow through your enemies and complete the objective. Alongside the Battlefront series came many more games like LEGO Star Wars, Star Wars Jedi Starfighter, Star Wars Bounty Hunter, and Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith that was patterned after the movie of the same name, where you play as either Anakin or Obi-Wan and play through levels that are just like the films. And some levels that were designed completely from scratch. Play as Anakin and feel the transition over to the dark side. And then play as Obi-Wan and follow the trail of Anakin's destruction. And then meet for the final climactic battle on Mustafar. And with a secret ending as well, when you play as Anakin. While not all movie tie-in games were successful, the PS2 era saw a number of successful games that were able to capture the essence of the movies and translate them into fun and engaging gameplay experiences. These games helped to popularize the PS2 console even further, and they paved the way for future movie tie-in games from other consoles. Now, with extreme popularity of the Fast and Furious movies coming out around the early 2000s, there weren't any direct movie tie-in games for the Fast and Furious films, but there were some games that certainly took the concept of street racing, car customization, and tuning, and made it their own. The Dean for Speed Underground series was a popular racing game franchise for the PS2. The series was known for its fast-paced arcade-style racing gameplay, as well as its customization options for cars which allowed players to modify and tune their vehicles to their liking. The connection between the Need for Speed Underground series and the Fast and Furious movies began with the release of the first Fast and Furious movie in 2001. The movie was a hit with audiences and it helped to popularize the tuner car culture that was prevalent in the underground racing scene. The Need for Speed Underground series was released in 2003 and was heavily influenced by the same tuner car culture that was featured in the Fast and Furious movies. The Need for Speed Underground series featured a number of customization options for cars, including various body kits, spoilers, rims and decals that allowed players to create unique and personalized vehicles. These customization options were familiar to the ones featured in the Fast and Furious movies, which often featured highly modified cars with distinctive looks. In addition to the customization options, the Need for Speed Underground series also featured illegal street racing. Players could compete in races on city streets, evading police and other racers while trying to be the first one to cross the line. Not only the Need for Speed series absorbed the concept of the Fast and Furious films and made a game featuring those popular game features. The Midnight Club series is known for its open world racing gameplay, which allows players to race through the cities and other environments, evading police and competing against other racers, very familiar to the Need for Speed Underground series. The Fast and Furious film franchise had a significant influence on the Midnight Club series as well. Both franchises, again, revolve around the high-speed street racing and feature a similar aesthetic that celebrates car culture and customization. The first Midnight Club game was released in 2000, while it was well received by critics and players, it didn't gain the mainstream popularity until the release of Midnight Club 2 in 2003. The game's focus on illegal street racing and its open world design made it a hit among fans of the Fast and Furious films, which had just released its second installment, Too Fast, Too Furious, in the same year. The Midnight Club series continued to draw inspiration from the Fast and Furious franchise, with its subsequent releases Midnight Club 3 Dub Edition, released in 2005, featured a custom soundtrack that included tracks 
from the Fast and Furious films, as well as custom car skins based on the cars featured in the movies. The game's marketing campaign even featured a tie-in with the release of the Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift, with the movie's cars and characters appearing in the game. Similarly, Midnight Club Los Angeles, released in 2008, featured a number of customization options inspired by the Fast and Furious films, including the ability to customize cars with vinyl decals, spoilers, and body kits. The game also included a range of street racing events and challenges that drew inspiration from the movies, such as drag racing and even drift challenges. Overall, the influence of the Fast and Furious franchise on the Midnight Club series of games can be seen in the game's focus on high-speed street racing, open-world design, and customization options. The franchises share a similar aesthetic that celebrates car culture and the thrill of high-speed racing, making the Midnight Club games a popular choice among fans of the Fast and Furious films. However, if movie tie-in games are not your thing, and if your parents want you to play something simple, fun, and non-violent, then they probably bought you some platform games like Jack and Dexter, Ratchet and Clank, Sly Cooper, and Tack and the Power of Juju. They were popular titles on the PlayStation 2 console and remain popular among gamers today. These games share many similarities in terms of gameplay, characters, and themes. Jack and Daxter was developed by Naughty Dog and released in 2001. The game follows the adventures of Jack, a silent protagonist with the ability to transform into different forms, with his wide-cracking sidekick Daxter, who is transformed into an Otzel, a cross between an otter and a weasel. The game features a mix of platforming, combat, and puzzle solving, and set in a lush, fantastical world. Ratchet & Clank was developed by Insomniac Games and released in 2002. The game follows the adventures of Ratchet, who has a talent for tinkering and gadgetry, and his robotic companion Clank. The game features a mix of platforming, shooting, and puzzle solving, and is set in a futuristic universe filled with colorful characters and imaginative weapons. Sly Cooper series is a beloved platforming franchise developed by Sucker Punch Productions. The series follows adventures of a raccoon thief named Sly Cooper and his friends, who are all anthropomorphic animals. The first game in the series, Sly Cooper and the Thievius Raccoonus, was released in 2002 for the PlayStation 2. The game's mix of stealth and platforming gameplay, as well as its engaging storyline and charming characters, quickly made it a hit with gamers. The second game in the series, Sly 2, The Band of Thieves, was released in 2004 and expanded on the original game's formula by adding new gameplay mechanics and more open-world environments. The third game, Sly 3 Honor Among Thieves, was released in 2005 and brought the series to a satisfying conclusion. The games are known for their stylish graphics, engaging gameplay, and memorable characters and have since been remastered for modern consoles. Attack and the Power of Juju is a 3D platformer developed by THQ for the PlayStation 2. The game follows the adventures of a young boy named Tack, who is tasked with saving his village from an evil sorcerer. Tack must use his magical powers and his wits to navigate through a variety of environments, defeat enemies, and solve puzzles. The game's mix of platforming, combat, and puzzle solving gameplay was well received by critics and players and spawned a successful franchise that includes several sequels and spin-offs. The game's colorful graphics and charming characters, as well as its unique setting inspired by Polynesian culture, also helped it stand out from other platformers of the time. Overall, Tack and the Power of Juju is a beloved classic among PS2 platformers and remains a fan favorite to this day. One of the key factors contributing to the popularity of platform games like Jack and Daxter, Ratchet and Clank, and others was their emphasis on exploration and discovery. These games featured a large open worlds that players could explore at their own pace, uncovering secrets, finding hidden items, and discovering new areas. The games also featured a variety of characters, each with their own unique personalities and quirks. Players could interact with these characters, completing tasks and missions for them, 
which help to create a sense of immersion and depth within the game. Another factor contributing to the popularity of these games was their sense of humor. Each game featured a mix of witty one-liners, slapstick comedy, and pop culture references that added to the fun and light-hearted tones of the game. Overall, platform games remain popular among gamers today due to their emphasis on exploration, their colorful characters and environments, and their sense of humor. These games helped to define the platformer genre on the PlayStation 2 console and set the standard for future platforming games. For those that enjoyed a more direct combat of fighting games, the PS2 did not disappoint fans of that genre either. The games where you can either play against your friends or siblings and see who truly is the best, or you can play against the CPU and battle your way to the top and win the title of Master Fighter. The PlayStation 2 console was home to a wide variety of fighting games, ranging from the classic 2D fighters to 3D brawlers. These games were known for their intense action, strategic gameplay, and competitive multiplayer modes. Some of the most popular fighting games for the PS2 include Tekken 5. It's a 3D fighting game that features a large cast of characters, each with their own unique fighting styles and moves. The game features a deep combat system that emphasizes timing, positioning, and strategy, and is known for its fast pace and tense battles. Soul Calibur 2 is a 3D fighting game that features a large cast of characters, each with their own unique weapons and fighting styles. The game features a range of single player modes, as well as popular multiplayer mode that allows players to compete against each other online. Mortal Kombat Deception is a 3D fighting game that features a large cast of characters, each with their own unique fatalities and special moves. The game also features a range of single player modes, including a story mode and puzzle mode, as well as a popular multiplayer mode. Capcom vs SNK2 Mark of the Millennium 2001 is a 2D fighting game that features a large cast of characters from both the Capcom and SNK universes. The game features a range of single player modes, as well as a popular multiplayer mode that allows players to compete against each other online. Guilty Gear X2 is a 2D fighting game that features a unique art style and a cast of characters with unique fighting styles and moves. The game features a range of single player modes as well as a popular multiplayer mode. Dragon Ball Z Budokai is a series of fighting games based on the Dragon Ball anime manga series. Games were released for the PlayStation 2 console between 2002 and 2007, and they were well received by fans of the series for their faithful adaptations of the storylines, as well as their enjoyable gameplay mechanics. There were three main games in the series, Dragon Ball Z Budokai, Dragon Ball Z Budokai 2, and Dragon Ball Z Budokai 3. Each game covered different story arcs from the Dragon Ball Z anime, and they all featured a variety of characters from the series, including Goku, Vegeta, Piccolo, and more. The gameplay of the Budokai series was based on a traditional 3D fighting game formula, with players able to execute various moves, combos, and special attacks against their opponents. Each game featured a story mode where players could progress through the events of the Dragon Ball Z anime and manga, as well as a versus mode where they could battle against other players or computer-controlled opponents. These fighting games were known for their deep combat systems, diverse character rosters, and competitive multiplayer modes. They were popular among both casual and hardcore gamers, and helped to establish the PlayStation 2 as a major platform for fighting games. However, if winning the Master Fighter title isn't something that's in your training schedule, there may be something less aggressive and even more competitive, with a bit of strategy, would be more your speed. Sports games have been a staple in video games since the very beginning, going all the way back to the NES. PS2 was no different. Popularizing major sports series such as FIFA Soccer, Madden NFL, 
NBA 2K, MLB The Show, and NHL. These games featured licensed teams and players from around the world, and offer a variety of gameplay modes including single player career mode, online multiplayer, and local multiplayer. These games are known for their realistic graphics, deep gameplay mechanics, and smooth animations. These games have a massive fan base even to this day by releasing a title every single year of updated rosters and player stats. Overall, sports games were a major part of the PS2's library and were popular with players of all ages. The console's powerful hardware allowed for developers to create realistic simulations of various sports, making the games a hit with fans who wanted to experience their favorite sports with the comfort of their own homes. Even with all the amazingly varied titles of games for folks of all ages to enjoy, PS2 had to come with some basic components out of the box, but later added some amazingly innovative accessories. Now with some games you could play with up to four players, however the PS2 itself only had two inputs for controllers, so they developed the multi-tap. It was an accessory that allowed up to four controllers to be connected to the PS2, making it possible to play multiplayer games with friends and family. Sony also developed the network adapter. The PS2 can be connected to the internet using a network adapter which allowed players to access online features and play games with other players over the internet. It was mainly used for downloading updates to major games like the Final Fantasy series. Now, before the Xbox had the Kinect, the PS2 had the iToy. The iToy camera was a motion sensing camera that could be used to play games and interact with the PS2 without a controller. The camera was used in a variety of games, from dancing games to sports games. Only a select few games were released in North America that required the iToy. Unfortunately, it didn't become very popular. Now, what did become very popular was the Guitar Hero controller. The PS2 was home to the popular music game franchise, Guitar Hero, which required a specialized guitar-shaped controller to play. The controller had buttons that the players had to press in time with the music, simulating the experience of playing a real guitar. Many people still play these games to this day with the age-old controllers. Teaming up with friends and family and trying to beat them at Freebird or Sweet Child of Mine. One thing I'm sure a few people may have had in their homes was the dance pads. The dance pads were specialized controllers that allowed players to play dancing games by stepping on different parts of the pad in time with the music. Very similar to the Guitar Hero controller. Games like Dance Dance Revolution. Racing games were popular for the PS2, and specialized steering wheels controllers were available to enhance the experience of playing these games. Sony teamed up with Logitech and released the PS2 Logitech Driving Force Steering Wheel. It was able to sit on your table or desk, and with the foot pedals below, you could have the ultimate experience of racing a car. Now, one of the coolest and probably most logical ad accessory that Sony developed for the PS2 was the DVD remote. The PS2 was also a popular DVD player, and a specialized remote control was available for easy navigation of DVD menus and playback controls. I mean, wireless controllers, as far as the DualShock, weren't really a thing yet. If you wanted to sit on the couch, watch a movie, or pop in a CD while doing chores, but didn't want to run all the way back to use the controller to switch songs, having a remote that was just like your TV to either turn on your PS2, eject or retract the disc tray, play and pause, skip, and all other features of a normal remote, it was the perfect basic needed accessory for the PS2. Just pop in Finding Nemo, sit back and enjoy the movie from the couch, Overall, the PS2 had a wide range of accessories available that enhanced the gaming experience and made it possible to enjoy a large variety of games 
and the eye toy. The popularity of the console and its large library of games made it a fertile and enjoyable entertainment system for gamers of all ages. Even with all the amazingly varied games and accessories, the console itself, however, had quite the unique design similarity. While the design of the PlayStation 2 console is often associated with its sleek black exterior and its unique Emotion Engine hardware, the console's designers drew inspiration from a variety of sources when creating the console's overall look and feel. One of the lesser known inspirations for the PS2's design was the Atari Falcon 040, a computer released by Atari in the early 1990s. The Falcon 040 was a powerful computer in its time, featuring a Motorola 68040 processor and a unique wedge-shaped design that set it apart from other computers of the era. According to an interview with the PlayStation lead designer, Teo Goto, the team was inspired by the Falcon 040's design when creating the PlayStation 2. In particular, Goto noted that he was drawn to the Falcon 040's cutting edge bold and daring design, and wanted to create a console that would be similarly distinctive and memorable. However, while the PlayStation 2's overall shape and design may have been influenced by the Falcon 040, the console's hardware and technology was entirely different. The PlayStation 2 was built using a custom design emotion engine, processor, and graphics chip, which allowed it to produce stunning graphics and support a wide range of games and multimedia applications. Despite its unconventional design and technical specifications, the PlayStation 2 went on to become one of the best-selling video game consoles of all time, with over 155 million units sold worldwide. Its influence can still be felt in the gaming industry today, as many of its most popular games and franchises have again continued to thrive on newer consoles and platforms. The PS2's legacy is undeniable. It was a console that helped push the gaming industry forward, introducing new technology and gameplay mechanics that are still used today. The PS2 also had a huge impact on the way we consume media, as it was the first console to introduce the DVD format for video games. Many of the games released for the PS2 are still considered classics. Thank you all for reaching the end of this amazing journey. If you're one of the ones who have enjoyed the era of the PS2 as I did, and have fond memories of playing either dozens of its amazing titles, or just simply enjoying the same few over and over again, then you are not alone. The PS2 was the highest selling gaming console for a reason and it certainly has showed with its still overwhelmingly popularity to this day, with people still owning several of the old fat console. Even though no one can buy an in-the-box brand new PS2 anymore, the legacy still lives on in retro gaming simulators. That we shall cover in coming videos. I want to thank my fellow YouTubers White Light, Lasers, and Fishy for the inspiration of for this video. They've done several lengthy retrospective videos that have inspired me to make this one. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and if you have, feel free to like, subscribe, and comment on your favorite thing about the PlayStation 2. Thank you for watching.